Okay, boys and girls, today we're talking about hammock camping in the rain versus tent camping in the rain. And in this video, it's going to be more of a response to another video made that is quite popular. And I thought that I would kind of dispel some of the bias to that video with my own experience. Now, before we get into this, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Now, let's jump right into it. Okay, so in this video, I'm not going to be trying to sell you on hammock camping or tent camping, though I definitely have my uh, preferred method, and that is tent camping, although I have my hammock set up today because I thought I'd be a little bit more fair uh, in my explanations. But today, I wanted to break down camping in the rain and ultimately the pros and cons that come with tents and hammocks in the rain uh, from my personal experience. So let's, like I said, let's talk about that. So the first rule, in my opinion, to hammock or tent camping in the rain is don't camp in the rain. I think that knowingly choosing to camp in the rain is a horrible idea, and regardless to what sleep system you use, even if it isn't a hammock or a tent, uh, it is probably going to suck because camping or generally being out in the rain, even if we're not talking about sleep system as a whole, is just not fun. You know, hiking, backpacking, um, cooking, doing really anything in the rain is just not that much fun. So being out in the rain is not a great idea and camping in it isn't either. So the first rule for me, and as you can see clearly, I am not camping in the rain because the camping in the rain just sucks. Uh, so that is the first rule of camping in the rain. Don't do it. Okay, so now that we've discussed that, let's talk about uh, some of the, th the pros and cons of these sleep systems. So whether you are camping with a hammock or with a tent, location really matters. Now in the video, and I'm going to include a link to the video in the description below so you can check out the video, or maybe I'll put in like a little card up here or something, but um, in that video, they showcased the hammock being in a really good, really kind of closed area that had a good canopy over it and the tent was just out in an open field and I will say regardless to whether you are in a hammock or in a tent the objective is that location absolutely matters uh, you want to for sure choose a place whether it's a tent or a hammock that gives you the best coverage now some people may say that you know inherently a hammock has to be strung between two trees or two you know solid points obviously that's how a hammock works so usually you will get a little bit of a canopy on both sides if not a full enclosed canopy now i don't have that here but that certainly is an attainable thing that can be done with hammocks. However, let's not kid ourselves, and I myself have, when ca tent camping in the rain, put my tent directly at the base of a tree. And that was to, like I said, offer myself the best protection. Now, of course, my tent still got wet. I did not personally get wet inside the tent, and there wasn't any pooling up inside the tent. But, you know, uh, the tent obviously still got wet from the rain, but location, 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 location is the biggest thing and will naturally provide you with the best protection against inclement weather. I mean, I think that this is even just a basic survival thing, you know, whenever you're setting up a shelter for survival, you want to pick the right location. Once again, you don't want to set your... Um, you don't want to set your, you know, mylar blanket shelter out in the middle of the field. You know, you want to put in a really good, really closed area. So location is key. So now let's talk about the cons to hammocks. So the biggest thing for me, and I think that this goes really under mentioned when it comes to hammock camping in the rain. And the biggest reason why I don't hammock camp in the rain is that if you hammock camp, for long enough. Even if you have, obviously, you will need to have some kind of ASIM tarp over you protecting your head um, or, you know, overhead. What happens with a lot of rain or over the course of time is that the trees that your hammock is invariably connected to will get water on them and that water will run down, saturate your hammock straps and the connection points between your hammock and your your straps 
and your hammock and everything eventually gets wet and of course when you're sitting in a hammock and I've purposely lowered this one a little bit so I can sit more easily but even when your hammock is a little bit more taut and is up a little bit higher uh, for sleeping you still are at the lowest point when you're laying down in your hammock. So what ends up happening is all that water that's collecting in your straps and beating from the trees all trickles down to you and once again given enough rain, given enough downpour and enough time can actually soak the fabric of your hammock. Even if you have a full ASIM tarp and once again I have used a UGQ Winter Dream 11 and this Hammock Bliss Double uh, hammock and I have still gotten wet because once again it didn't make it through the winter dream 11 tarp the tarp was completely able to protect me from overhead but the water soaked through the straps down to the hammock and then ran down the hammock and got me wet so given enough time in the rain hammocks are a terrible option because they will get wet for sure regardless to what you do and there's no protecting this because what's happening is is the tree itself is getting wet and the water is running down the tree and as it runs down the tree it gets to your straps so it's, unless you can put a plastic bag over the trees that you're uh, hitching off to uh, which is impossible you know you will eventually get wet now once again this does take a while you know this isn't immediate this doesn't happen within the first 20 minutes but this is something that does happen if you are hammock camping multiple days outside with your hammock so keep that in mind the next thing i want to say about hammocks even if you have an amazing uh even if you have an amazing asim tarp over you and even if you have, you know, good solid straps and your hammock itself doesn't get wet, usually you are carrying gear, like shown here. Um, usually you are carrying gear and that gear has to sit on the ground. Obviously you can't necessarily put it in your uh, hammock, especially if you have a smaller hammock like this. Um, you can't necessarily put the stuff in your hammock. And so even if you and your hammock stay dry, I have once again experienced in the past, especially under unlevel ground, that water will run underneath your hammock. Once again, this isn't something you can necessarily prevent because your tarp is only going to be covering from overhead exposure, you know, overhead rainfall. So if you have rain pooling up and coming underneath your tarp, uh, you can still get things wet. So your pack, cameras, things can still get very wet if they are on the ground. And unfortunately, with a lot of hammock setups, it's not very easy to suspend that gear up above the ground. This is kind of one of those nice things about a tent, is because a tent is a fully enclosed thing, you know, um, water has a lot harder time kind of penetrating it from all directions. Not to say the tents are impervious, they are not impervious, but they are a lot harder to ultimately get to because of this fact. You know, you have a full enclosed uh, kind of uh, sleep system, whereas with a hammock setup, you really just have your top and sides kind of covered. So you can still have stuff come in under or underneath you and get things wet. So keep this in mind and, you know, you might have to bring a few nails to, you know, nail your stuff or hang your stuff up under the trees that you're hitching off to. It might be an option, it might not be an option, you know, but you have to keep that in mind when considering being ready for rain. To finish up the bashing on hammocks, I don't want to make hammocks sound entirely bad. One really solid thing about hammocks and something that I personally like is invariably whatever sleep system you use is going to get wet. Given enough rain, enough exposure, and enough time, uh, anything will get wet and anything will become soaked and saturated. So the good thing about hammocks is being that they are smaller and individual pieces, they are much easier to dry out in the field. In addition to that, a hammock is already designed to be hung up. So when the rain stops or if you get to a point where there is no more rain, um, you can hang up your hammock even if it is wet and let it air dry out like a piece of clothing. So they are much easier and usually much faster to dry out than something like a tent. Once again, tents are usually much larger and they are not designed to be hung up in, the, in any kind of suspension. So trying to dry them out usually just means throwing them on the ground and letting them dry until they're dry. So that is one big pro to hammocks is that they are much easier to dry 
and you know get back to a functional state once they have been soaked. So that is a good point to them. I will give them that. So that basically wraps up the things I have to say about the hammock. Let's talk about tents. So what are some cons to tents? Like I said, they are larger and they are harder to dry out. So you do need to be cautious when you are getting a tent wet, how long you're going to be out and how reasonably easy it's going to be to dry it back out. However, there are a few pros to this because one of the biggest things that a lot of people don't factor when tent camping is rarely ever or practically never, I've personally never just slept straight on my tent's ground cloth or, you know, the kind of piece of the tent that is touching the ground. Usually I use an air mattress or, you know, a kind of blow up air mattress or, you know, blankets, something as a barrier between the ground and me. And what this means is even if the very bottom of the tent is wet, which it can sometimes get that way, so so long as I kept my air mattress and my sleeping bag on that air mattress, I was dry. I was completely bone dry, even though my tent, you know, the exterior walls, the ground floor was wet and damp and it wasn't necessarily pooling at that time you know I, I the kind of video that I'm responding to showed some pooling and that can happen it's certainly with poor constructed tents that will happen but with a lot of good tents that will not happen but you know the ground might get wet you know your sidewalls might get wet and so so long as you are on that you know, air mattress or such, you know, you have that barrier protecting you from the ground, you will stay dry. So that is something that, like I said, a lot of people don't factor and is very important to know because it's the game changer. So another one, so another one for me is that in my opinion, and once again, this is strictly my opinion, I find that tents are usually easier to place in better locations. And this is because a tent, especially a freestanding tent, requires no, uh, no, it requires nothing from its environment. So with a hammock, invariably, you have to string a hammock up between two solid contact points. Whether that's, you know, the side of a truck and a tree, two trees, you know, whatever you're going to use, it has to be connected to two solid points. And so that does give you some limitation to where you can set up your hammock. And like I said, especially with a freestanding tent, there is really no limitations to where you can set that tent up. It is its own unit and will work with itself. You know, it doesn't need any outside uh, assistance. So once again, kind of going back to it, I've been able to put a lot of my tents in rain under very heavy trees or trees that had very thick, very large canopies. And once again, it didn't mean that my tent stayed completely dry, but my tent was significantly drier because it was underneath a heavy canopy, especially spruce trees that are very large, old grown uh, spruce trees have very large very heavy canopies uh, to them and block a substantial amount of rain from coming to the ground and even snow in the winter. So uh, having a tent and being able to place it wherever you need it to be placed is a huge advantage over hammocks because you have to work within the confines of whatever you can hitch your hammock up to. So something to bear in mind as well when you're trying to factor in inclement weather and uh, tents or hammocks. <laughs> so another con to hammocks, or another con to tents that certainly was pointed out in the video, is the setup time. It is certainly unfortunate that, you know, you usually have to set up the core of your tent and then the rain fly. And if it is already raining when you're doing this, you know, obviously the inside can get a little bit wet. But I think that this point is also kind of over exaggerated because once again, having set up tents in the rain, you know, if you, if you set them up with purpose, and, you know, you kind of lay out the components so that you set out the inside or the you know core of the tent and then the rain fly you can do this with a reasonably good speed and I, I think it's kind of overinflated that some people might think you know oh you're just going to get pooling of water unless it's just a straight downpour you know you're probably not going to get the inside of your tent very wet if wet at all um, and once again too if it's just a straight downpour that's probably a good sign that you should not be setting up to camp 
uh, at that very moment in time. Um, or you should try to choose a different location. I think that this is, uh, so it's fairly obvious that, you know, if it is just a straight downpour and you're already in your tent, then, you know, weather the storm. But if it's, you're trying to set up your tent and it's a straight downpour, chances are you should probably just try to wait it out or try to find another location where the rain isn't quite as severe, if at all possible. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my personal experience on that. So the last point I kind of have for uh, tents is usually, once again, you know, there is this idea of pooling and some tents are poorly designed and some tents do truly pool. Um, you know, I think that poorly crafted tents have gotten a lot of bad rap or kind of tainted the tent kind of market. And a lot of people look at tents poorly because they see, you know, one or two cheap tents that were poorly crafted and poorly made and it gives the whole kind of, like I said, uh, tent industry a bad rap, but good tents do still repel water even when wet and You know they keep the lion's share of water off of you if you are inside of them So this idea or this notion that you know uh, if, if your tent gets too wet It's just gonna start pooling up water and such uh, this just really isn't the truth um, unless once again there's severe or torrential downpours which you know once again if there's torrential downpours or if there's like a seriously bad storm you should probably consider trying to vacate the area and not hunker down whether you have a hammock whether you have a hammock or you have a tent you know uh, you should probably try to leave that area not hunker down because even if you are completely dead tired you know you have to factor something that's super important whether you're camping bushcrafting hiking backpacking whatever you know your sleep is very important and how good that sleep is largely dictates your abilities and your energy level the next day so if you go into sleeping in poor conditions you know you set up your tent in a bad rain or you set up your hammock in a bad rain and you know that you know your sleep is not going to be great or that's going to be interrupted or that you're going to be wet or whatnot you know you're setting yourself up for failure and sometimes it's truly best to just push on even if you are dead tired as opposed to just trying to sleep in a bad storm so once again you know every situation is slightly different but by and large in my own personal recommendations it's best to not camp in the rain and avoid camping in the rain at all at all um, if at all possible and once again if you're trying to set up your tent or hammock in a severe storm you probably are best trying to vacate the area as opposed to weathering it out um, once again not saying you can't weather it out and not saying that that can't be done but it's just ultimately better for you and lo your longevity if you don't so anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you can kind of see some of the pros and cons and admittedly i might be a little bit more biased to tents i personally prefer tents though i have hammock camped a bit and i certainly obviously own a hammock and a hammock camping setup but they are definitely not my favorite for a few solid reasons so hammocks are not bad but they do have a lot of uh, cons that you need to factor in if you are truly considering camping in a hammock. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. As always, God bless and I'm out.